Uh, good morning, everyone. It's our honor to be here to give a presentation to all of you. Uh, today, uh, we're going to talk about income inequality in the United States and its short-term expectations. Uh, this is our outline. I'm in charge of the introduction and conclusion. Lawrence will talk about uh, the subjective cognition and objective mobility, and Mario will cover the policy implications. <clears throat> here we go. Income inequality is not new to all of us, but have you ever noticed how severe it is? Uh, in fact, the richest 10% uh, actually is earning more than 50% of the nation's income. What's worse, the top 1% earns uh, over 40 times as the income of the second percentage. So uh, it's obvious that uh, the income inequality should draw our attention. So why is it important? Do our citizens feel not necessary to resolve the problem? Is the chance of getting rich equal to every American citizen? Do public policies such as tax cuts resolve the situation? We see that even after tax, the Gini coefficient still rises from 1970 to 2005. Therefore, income inequality exists and worsens. Okay, now I'll talk about the subjective feelings of how citizens feel. So according to a general survey of 2010 to 14, we found out that over 40% of the citizens state that we need urgent help from the government. So talking about inequality, it's not only a problem about how the academic view, how economists think, but also citizens did feel it well. So according to The Price of Inequality, a book written by Joseph Stiglitz, it is said that first, there are market failures due to the capitalism and also because it's almost a free market in the United States. So this is more kind of a Keynesian point of view. And next on, there could be crisis. So how is it crisis? Think of Egypt and Tunisia. They got the actually same inequality problem as the same Gini coefficient growth after the years. So that's how the protest came on. So what could we what could we do about it? About government taxation and others, we'll talk about it later. But first, we'll we'll tell you who of these people think that is urgent. So here's the econometric form that I written before using the GSS data. So we will actually put in other dummies such as religion, region, and kind of um, ethics. Also your age, your education, and so on. So okay, here's the regression outcome. So using the simplest OLS rules for, um, for our logic, or even adding the fixed effects, as I mentioned before, we'll find out that for people who feel hopeful to the future, they might need less help from the government. But in, in fact, <coughs> it means that the other part who feel not that hopeful think the government must help right here, right now. And for people who believe in the government themselves, they think that this is also necessary. But if we talk a little bit more about age, <coughs> this tells you that for young people, they need the government help. So what's the American dream? Everyone got the same chance to reach the highest point. But when the young people didn't see the future, they need the government to help to solve the inequality, to stop the ones who sit on the top who never fail. Okay, so now we'll talk about <coughs> mobility problems. So if you really know, like knowing that about two to three years ago, there's like kind of a huge wave in the economic world, which is written by Thomas Piketty, Thomas Piketty the uh, capital of capitalism of the 21st century. There's a kind of a structural problem, which means that for non-labor income, you're growing more than the whole economic growth. So when you're actually a labor, you're working very hard, you, you are earning money, kind of growing less, little bit by little by little, year by year. But the ones who just sit in their room, like um, having their environment very free and taking the air conditioner, sit there and gain their interest with a higher rate than your own wage. Is this fair? Or maybe talk about Piketty's partner, Emmanuel says, says tell that, tell that, sorry. <coughs> We got a low mobility. With a lot of new measurements, we'll tell you that the ones who sit there will never fall, the ones stand here will never rise. And he's using social security data and the US taxation data. But someone else, for example, Lawrence Summers, <coughs> he's the former, former president, uh, president of Harvard, Business, uh, Harvard University. And he, he's also the Clark Medal winner. He said that there's kind of, yeah, the problem exists, but he doubt that 
this is not the main problem that we are discussing about inequality. But because, just think of marriage, they'll, they'll pick, pick someone from the very rich and another one from the very rich, combine them together, maybe becoming two or three children. So each of these children, they might have different, like, different social status. So this is not the main problem. And even he thinks that because of the taxation, not the same person sitting like right on the top. But I strongly doubt Somerset's, like, Somerset's um, claim, kind of it. So here's actually the, the short index, which means that how your Gini coefficient will grow in the short run or the long run. Here we are using a 10 year short index, which means that in recent years, we'll find out the Gini coefficient will just rise quickly or kind of over 60%. If, and here's the same problem again. It is not fair for the young people. We get no future. That's what the problem is really important and urgent. And finally, here's the transaction matrix, which means that from, from the left-hand side, you'll find out one to five means you're the poorest to the richest. If now you're sitting in one of these groups, where will you be 10 years later? Just think about it. If you're now you're the poorest part, like poorest 20%, you've got only merely 1% of chance to reach the top of the society. Is this fair? I don't really think so. So this is how I doubt Somerset's like, <clears throat> claim here. And for the rich people, there's a 72% chance that you'll sit right on the top. You only got a 3% chance that you'll fall, fall off, but that's a 10 year gap. So just think of 10 years, that's quite a long time. And this is what I call, I'm calling it the inequality matters. And the subjective and objective, both sides really explain the problem. And from these perspectives, uh, first of all, I'll talk about the tax policy, uh, the, uh, the previous tax policy. Bush issued the Tax uh, Reduction Act, and this act significantly lowered the tax rate for the, all of the U.S. taxpayers, also lowered the rate on the divided income and capital gains. So we can easily find that this policy can, uh, that uh, largely and directly benefited the uh, high income people and in the wealthy class uh, and the, as for the benefits for the middle class and the working class uh, maybe seemed very small and unclear and during the Bush presidency uh, the highest one person uh, uh, earners accounted for a greater share of the total income pie so the so the income inequality has increased and when it, when it comes to the Obama, he promoted the tax reduction uh, for the middle class will increase tax for the wealthy people. Uh, and this this policy seemed to narrow the pay gap, but uh, and it really worked at first. But when we move to this slide and uh, look at this line chart, we can find that uh, after the financial crisis in 2000, 2008, the uh, the income inequality started widening. And in this year's election, Hillary uh, proposed raising, uh, raising tax, the taxes for the, uh, for the wealthy people. And this policy seems seem like the, uh, maybe like the COVID or the, the continuum of the current uh, uh, tax policy. So we expect that there, there may be no big change on the current uh, serious situation. And as for the Trump, uh, his proposal is raising taxes. Uh, sorry, it's uh, it's, it's car, uh, car, cutting taxes for the all of the U.S. peer, and which is similar to the Bush, uh, Bush, Bush, uh, Bush tax card. So, uh, in this case, we we think this policy is just designed for the wealthy people, and the largest benefits uh, will go on to the high income, uh, high income, uh, the the class. So, the, in in this case, we, we expect that in the short term expectation. The income quality will has not changed at least or uh, even worse. Uh, in our study, uh, we've, we we uh, we analyzed the problem from three perspectives. From the subjective cognition, forty percent of the people are concerning and asking for urgent policy. From objective mobility, uh, the the mobility is rich, which means that the remain, uh, rich remains rich and poor stays poor. And from policy implications, we see that there's little effect in the past and it seems hopeless. And we also come up with several suggestions for the government. Uh, it should take direct action to subsidize the poor under the poverty line. 
and the tax policies should be revised with the differentiation models, and the min minimum wage rules should be adjusted in a nationwide scale. That's the end of our presentation. Thank you. Questions? Okay, go first. Who's showing next? Oh, showing next means that. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Back to the page. Okay, this is an index measured by Sharks. He's taking econometric methods to predict what your Gini coefficient will be, will rise. How much your Gini coefficient will rise in the future? So, the higher index it is, the higher the Gini coefficient is expected to rise. Okay. Well, uh, I would like to ask you, um, uh, the Gini of the <laughs> <laughs> Which one? <laughs> This one? This one? Okay. Uh, what kind of investor do you use to test, test if the numbers and the independent variable are random or outstanding? Okay, uh, actually I just did the, yeah, ordinary square as, uh, as this one you see right down here. And I, as I said, yeah, this is how you feel about the government. Do you feel hopeful and your age dummies as your background, your characteristics? And also, yeah, and the uh, other forms, so, exactly. So you see, sir, we are dependent, but how to uh, verify that they are causality? Oh, okay, this is actually only a, okay. Yeah, OLS will never measure this kind of problem. So, and, but here is, why is this important for, I, I, I mean, why is it important for only correlation, not talking about causality? It is that, now this is simply statistics, and they are all binary, binary variables, so that's why, I'm putting on a binary variable telling you that with a logic model, for which kind of people is it more possible that you will think of this problem? So even, so that's kind of, even without causality, we are talking about like which, which, which part of the people they are like striking right into. I have more, I put that main fixed effect, but actually there are just kind of the, a lot of other variables down here. So that's how I didn't mention it. I also want to uh, ask okay. a question about that. You know, uh, I noticed that uh, you have a uh, age, a uh, variable age 18 to 30, age 30, uh, 30 oh, okay. uh -huh. uh, Have you used the dummy variable in this part and how you use it? This is dummy variable. Yeah. So, yeah, this uh, is the dumb variable. I, I put them because they are actually one by one. Okay, I think I missed one point. <clears throat> so comparing to the numbers, like how, like the bigger the number is, it means that comparing to the people who age 71 to 88, that's like the final group of all these samples. How much you, you are more urged, you think it is more urgent that the government should help you to solve the problem. This is the point, this is how I use it. Uh, I think the model is great, but uh, I want to point out that the OLS and the fixed effect is not suitable for the binary and the variable. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually, this is uh, this is true. But uh, for any for any of these papers, you will always find that if if you are using OLS, but it shows the difference with logic, then it means that there uh, you can explain it with probability model, but you can't even explain it in econometrics. So that's how everyone will first put the OLS. Like right before you do everything, just read any of these economic papers. They did this. Yeah, that that not work. But we said, yeah, at the, least the at least at least they are not like going in the direct directly the step different ways. Can we turn to a paper? Huh? Okay, logic plus the fixed effect that I mentioned before, the dummies that I told you about the ethics, the region, and all, all these things about it. Huh? Yeah, I, I just show you like what I what need to be shown. But at other physics, for example, if you live in Arizona, it didn't, and someone lives in Virginia. It didn't really matter like your state got like a like a major difference and people should be really focusing on. Maybe these these states of people they are like connected with different ethics. So that's how the government couldn't say, hey, uh, you're 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 white, you shouldn't live here. You're, you're black, you should live here. It, it doesn't make sense. How do you the origin index? Okay, the origin index is only this is um it is from the general social survey GSS. 
Okay, for GSS, they got like plenty of problems for to ask people. They did it like kind of the a full interview and also kind of the cro crossing interviews by your family, your like your parents or actually your children or others. So this is kind of asking you how did N N means the people feel about something. So it's kind of your subjective feeling. That's how I take the subjective data right here, but the objective data not from the general social survey. Okay. Alright, just uh -huh. <laughs> oh, for presentations, I always sweat. So that's how I always need this. Right, I wonder if you, you found models by the quantity or survival. Is this from your previous research? Oh, no. This is a new one. Because for general social survey, I only did kind of the religion problem. But my previous research is uh, mainly in industrial organization and managerial, um, managerial economics and game theory. So not about inequality problems. This is kind of a macro one. So they think that there's no big reform or improvement on the current situation. Okay, okay. that's it for now. Good job, good job. Well done, everyone. What we're going to do now is a second round.